I was watching a uh, podcast on YouTube with um, two really, really famous psychologists on it, psychiatrists, actually. Um, Professor Marvin Goldfried from Stony Brook University, one of the first people who were really involved in developing CBT back in the 80s, continued to study. And then also uh, Dr. Alan Francis, who is um, probably kind of one of the most famous psychiatrists in the United States. He's sort of the dean of American psychiatry. He helped write the DSM-4, the Diagnostic and, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Psychiatric Disorders. He's a huge figure. So they're talking about uh, different things, future focus therapy, um, and how how very often psychotherapy doesn't focus enough on the future. It focuses too much on the past. Sometimes it focuses on the present, generally on the past. It's not enough future focused. And of course, Marvin is pointing out to Alan that CBT is generally a lot more future focused. But then they both referenced uh, this wonderful book um, and uh Alan said it was the most important book he'd read. And Marvin basically uh, said the same thing. And, and he had a little kind of doll of Freud. And he said, no, instead of Freud, we should have one of the author of this book. So what is this book? It's interesting. It's, it's called this. It's called Persuasion and Healing. And it's by uh, Jerome Frank and his daughter, Judith Frank. And it was in several editions. The last, the third edition came out. Da, 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 da. Third edition. Where's the date on it? I love looking at this. Was in... Um, First, it was 1961, first edition. The last edition came out then in 1991. And um, it's really fascinating. He does an incredible, careful review of the whole practice of psychotherapy in the broadest meaning of the term. The use of, of words to help us change, really. And ritual as well. And so he looks at religious rituals as well and everything that could possibly form within that sort of very broad definition of psychotherapy. And also what people come for. And generally, he says they come for one thing overall. They arrive because they are demoralized. They have lost hope. They can't cope anymore. And they're looking for help. And that, therefore, the purpose of psychotherapy fundamentally is a kind of remoralization, filling people with hope, courage, the potential to live their lives and handle things. And... In a very interesting chapter, chapter three, he says that really the domain of psychotherapy is rhetoric. What is rhetoric? Rhetoric is this, the study of how to give a powerful speech that moves hearts and, my, hearts and minds and changes behaviour. And um, he's saying essentially across everything, the practice of psychotherapy is more akin to rhetoric than anything else, or than science or anything like that. That's a really provocative idea. And this is coming from somebody incredibly well studied. And remember now, kind of the head of American psychiatry said this is the most important book he read. So that's a really fascinating idea. And it's particularly fascinating for us in the area of hypnosis and hypnotherapy. Um, why is that? Because hypnotherapy is about that we're not shouting a big speech there. We are guiding people with our words into very powerful, emotional, evocative experiences that change them. And that when you look at the way we construct language in hypnosis, that the construction of hypnotic suggestions, there are certain sort of guidelines or rules that we have. You know, it needs to be um, uh, always positive in the present tense, repeated. And it's quite interesting to compare these with the rules of classical rhetoric. And indeed, the person who founded the college, um, who was my tutor for a long time, and who I then I studied with, and then I took over our college from Donald Robertson, wrote a, a paper all about this, the comparison between um, uh, the guidelines for hypnotic suggestions and classical rhetoric. And it's so interesting then to come around and find this incredible piece of very informed writing from Jerome Frank and his daughter, saying that that is the domain of psychotherapy rhetoric and so hypnosis so where does hypnosis fit within psychotherapy well it's really interesting because the first psychotherapy really is hypnosis therapeutic suggestions in hypnosis the first time the word psychotherapy is used in a book title in the title of a chapter in the name of a clinic it is around suggestions given during hypnosis and and this was before freud 
came along and then Freud studied hypnosis and then he started to use hypnosis in his development of psychoanalysis and then he abandoned hypnosis and everybody agrees that hypnosis is the mother of psychoanalysis. It is the mother and the first of all psychotherapies. And it's so interesting then to read this from Jerome Frank, to read the impact of that book, that idea that fundamentally psychotherapy is the practice of rhetoric of remoralizing people, filling people with hope and motivation through the power of language. And hypnosis is the quintessential way to do that. Hope you enjoyed that. Take care.